Cameron Chai bringing another episode of Azo TV and today we're on site at Micro Materials and Mike Davis is going to give us a demonstration of how easy it is to use the Nano Test Vantage system. Okay, so this is the kind of sample that we typically work with. So this is a cross section of a solder on a copper sample. Uh, so what we want to do is look at the properties of the intermetallic layer in the cross section. So now I'm going to mount the sample up. So all we do to mount the sample is just slot this in here. Sample slides down and then line that up in the hole and tighten it up. Just make sure it's good and tight. So now that's securely in position. Okay, so um, the way that we run experiments on the Vantage is we start by lining them up under the microscope. So I'm just going to move from the indentation position over to the microscope position. So what this means we can do is we can uh, identify areas on the surface where we want to we want to make our indentations. So we can either set up single indentations at, at individual points of interest, or we can set up grids to look at areas of the sample which are of interest. So in this case, what we'd do is we'd, we'd perform a grid over the cross section of the solder intermetallic layer and copper in order to look at the, the gradient of properties through those different materials. Okay, so once, once you've got your sample in focus underneath the microscope, what the, the Nanotest Vantage software is designed to do is to allow you to find these areas of interest, set up your experiment, and then set up uh, and then run an automated schedule so that you can click go and walk away and then come back and your results will be there for you. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to set up an experiment through the experimental menu. So now what it's going to do is it's going to pull back from the microscope uh, just a safe distance before moving across. Then it's going to move uh, automatically, move over to the indented position, automatically find the contact, and then start the experiment that I've just set up. So that's actually now driving in towards the indenter, is it? So yeah, so set up in the calibrations, uh, we've got a, a safe stopping distance, if you like. Yep. So it'll move in quite quickly up to a certain distance. So I think it's, uh, well, no, I know it's set at 30 microns back from where the indenter is, and then it'll cover that last 30 microns slightly slower. It's in position now. Yep. Okay. Works for me. So yeah, it's just going to run through. Okay, so this is a typical set of indentation data. Uh, this is actually taken from a, a steel sample, one of the samples we use here at MML for calibration. Um, so this is the, the plot of a, a single indentation. So first we have the change in depth as the load is slowly increased. So we've got load on the, the vertical axis here, uh, up to a maximum load. We then have a hold at peak load to let uh, any kind of driven viscoelastic deformation to, to settle down before unloading. Okay, um, so we can analyze that data in order to look at things like hardness, uh, elastic modulus, and then the plastic and elastic work done during the indentation. Typically, people don't just do one indentation, so what we do there is we do a set of indentations. Uh, in this case, because it's just a, a bulk sample, we're looking at the homogeneity of the properties uh, across the sample surface. So you can see in this case, the, uh, the results are pretty good, so we've got good grouping on the, the indentation results there. Any scatter, probably due to a bit of residual surface roughness on this steel sample. Um, in samples like the uh, solder sample we discussed earlier, what people would do is look at the change in properties through the set of indentations. And what sort of variation would you expect to see if, if due to surface roughness? How, how does it affect the results you get? So essentially um, what you'll see as a result of surface roughness is some scatter in the loading data. Okay, so you can see here the, the loading slope in each case is slightly different and that's a result of the initial contact being different in each case. Um, the actual depth change during the hold and the slope of the unloading data is the same in each case. So does that, does it's, not all, it's not critical then to have a highly polished surface to work from then? I mean, Typically what we do is try and get the uh, surface to be as highly polished as possible. I mean, one other thing that could be contributing to the, the difference in the, the loading slope here is different phases in the steel. So obviously most steel samples are a multi-phase structure, so you wouldn't ex expect to get perfectly homogeneous properties from a steel sample anyway. Alright then. Okay Mike, thanks very much for the demonstration of the Nanotest Vantage system. Okay.